Welcome to this Google Drive screencast where we're taking a look at how to organize and access work with students. Specifically in this screencast, we're going to show how to distribute Google Drive files with the Doctopus script. It's a great classroom management strategy, helps to automate getting files out to students using Google Drive. Before we begin, some setup things to consider ahead of time. You want to have whatever Google Drive file you want to distribute, that, treat that as our template for this activity. You want to have a roster of your students as a spreadsheet, and I'll show an example of that here in a minute. And it's best to put everything in one Google Drive folder per assignment. So I'm going to show what that looks like now. So here I am in Google Drive. If I do go a little too quick, feel free to go back and, and rewatch the parts that you need to, to watch. I'm going to click on my drive. I'm going to create a folder for this assignment. I'm going to call this New Media Script uh, Assignment. And I'm going to hit Create. So that folder has now been created right here. I'm going to put what I need in this folder. There's currently nothing in there. So I happen to know I have a roster that I put over here. So let's do, let's see here, New Media. Let's put all three of these things. I have a rubric I'm going to use later. Here's the sample screencast script my students are going to use as a starting template. And I'm going to assign these to the New Media Script Assignment folder. It's just best to put everything in one folder. You'll see here in a minute um, as I go through it how it's a lot easier to find things if you know that they're already grouped together in one folder. Okay, all right, here's my roster. I recommend that every teacher do have a roster of your students. So here's the roster. Give your roster headers very simple one word title. So this is the first name column, last name column, email, and hour, class hour. This is if you're teaching middle school, high school. If you are teaching elementary, this could be grade, and you'd probably want to put, uh, if I was doing this as a sixth grade teacher, when we have our students name their files, they do it with the grade followed by the first initial of the teacher. Let's say that the last name was Vink, so I would do a V. So you'd want to have that be your student's uh, grade listed down. The reason we do this in the master roster is when we run this script it asks you to name the file and it's helpful to have all of this in the spreadsheet and it just pulls all the data out. I'm going to delete that for now. Uh, you can get a spreadsheet. I would recommend taking some time either at the beginning of the year to create a spreadsheet of all your student names like this or uh, you can probably pull this from your student information system like PowerSchool or Infinite Campus. There are ways to pull that data out of there and it'll make the spreadsheet for you. So we've got our master roster. You want to keep this file as your master. You don't ever want to mess with this one. Anytime you want to run the Doctopus script, you want to make a copy of this file. So I'm going to go to File, Make a Copy, and I'm going to call this New Media Script Assignment. Let's just do Script Roster. Okay, so this is for the script assignment. Let's take a look at what we're doing here for this uh, project. I'm going to open up. This is a sample screencast script I created for my students. This is kind of a template that I want them to follow. They're going to be writing out what words they're going to be speaking as they record a video and also listing their visuals. So this is a great example where I can use Doctopus to take this file, make a copy per student, and share individually to that student. So that's what we're doing for this activity here. So I'll go ahead and close that. I'm going to close up my master roster. And I've got the New Media Script assignment roster that I am currently going to use. So to run Doctopus, you go up to Tools and you go to the Script Gallery. In the Script Gallery, these are scripts that anyone can create and put in here that help to automate or do something in a spreadsheet. Doctopus happens to be featured here on the front. If it's not, you can use this search and type out Doctopus to find it. And I'm just going to go ahead and click Install. When you do click install, it's going to ask to authorize. This is created by an educator. Um, I happen to vouch for this one. I know that this script works. It's going to ask me to authorize, and it tells me all the different things that Google Apps needs access to in order to run. None of these things happen without your doing something to make them happen, so it's not like the script is going to take over any of your files or anything. Um, just basically scroll down in this window and click accept. That is your authorization for this script to run just on this spreadsheet. So it says it's installed. I'm going to close the window. Once the uh, script is installed, you get a new drop-down menu right here. And you go to Doctopus and you choose Launch Installation. 
When you choose Launce installation, there are three steps you work through. The first step is setting up the sharing. So I'm just going to work down through these drop down menus, reading these directions here. Uh, the first type, Doctopus has different um, types of sharing you can set up. For this example, we're going to say that we want to take this individual file, this one file, and copy it to all individuals all the same. Um, there are other ways to use Doctopus. You can set up project groups and you have to set up your spreadsheet uh, with project group numbers or letters and then it'll share one file to three students in a group um, and there's some other different things that you can do. This is typically the one that I've been using this the most for. Once I do that I have to choose these other things. Whole class access level. I'm going to say no access. This means that students will not have access to each other's files and the individual student will only be allowed to edit and that's what I want. I want them to be able to edit this file. I'm going to leave this checked saying that editors cannot change sharing permissions. Uh, that just means that I as the owner control the file. The students can't change sharing or take me off the file until I say so. Uh, email addresses. If I was team teaching I could put in my partner's email address. They'd be copied on all of this sharing. Uh, I don't have a team teacher for this one so not needed. The sheet that contains the roster is sheet one of this spreadsheet. It already sensed the email column because that's how I titled the headers, the first row. And if you are going to excuse a student, you could take out their name, their first name, and type excused. And this just means that they would not get shared on that file. Um, I don't have a need for that. I'm just going to leave that as first and nothing should happen. You can also choose to drop this file into individual folders. Uh, for this example, we're not going to show how to do that. That is a feature. Uh, it's an advanced feature that you can play with if, if you're familiar with using Google Drive. I'm going to click Save. It's going to move me on to Step 2. Step 2 is going to ask me where the file is that I want to copy. So the first thing we're going to do when this comes up is we're going to choose the folder. And this is why I recommended putting everything in a folder. All your folders are listed here alphabetically. So I happen to know I titled that NM. So let's jump down to the ends here. NM script assignment. Also says when I last edited that. So I know that's the folder I just created. I'm going to choose now from the files in there the document that was the new media sample screencast script. And I'm going to save. This is going to take me on to step three. Step three is going to ask me first, where do I want all these files put for me, the teacher? So once this comes up, I'm going to actually choose that same NM script assignment folder just to keep everything all in one place. So when step three comes up, I can either select a folder or if you didn't make a folder ahead of time, you could type a folder and then hit create and that would create a folder right here so you don't have to stop doing what you're doing. So I'm just actually going to choose that same folder because it makes sense to keep everything there. So new media script assignment. This means it's going to dump all files it creates in that folder. This is a part where you do have to, um, you, you have to follow this exactly to a T. So this is telling me what the different column headers are in the spreadsheet. Now this is asking how do I want the file to be named. So naming conventions for students are our, and so you're just transplanting this code in here. So our space, last name, space, and we'll call this script assignments. So that'll be how each student's file gets named. I can choose if I check this next box to send an email along with the sharing of this. So I am going to do that. I'm going to notify the students by email. Uh, so here I'm going to put in there the code for email address. It's going to pull from each column there. I can title this new media script assignment file due by Friday at 5 p.m. And this note will go to all students. I'm actually going to uncheck that for now. But if I did hit save, that would also send an email as we finish up here. So we're going to jump on to the final step, which is just to review everything you've set up. And here's everything we've done. This would also show the email setup, and I would hit Run, Copy, and Share. When you hit Run, Copy, and Share, the script starts working here in the background. So you'll see it added a few columns in the spreadsheet, and it's going to now go student one by one and make a file and share to each individual student. This does take time, uh, so you're going to let this run. Um, depending on how many students are in the spreadsheet, it might take a little while. If the script stops working, it will time out after five minutes. That is okay, because what happens is, and you can actually close this window, um, and the script will still continue running. Uh, what, what happens is, if it does stop, you can actually go back to Doctopus and go right back to step four, and it's just going to pick up wherever the last one left off. 
All right, so here we are. The script has finished running. Little box pops up, says that it's done. If there were any email addresses that were incorrect or something didn't work, you would see a note in here about that, in which case you could go back, fix that uh, line in your spreadsheet, and then you could go back to Doctopus step four and rerun it for that one line. Um, some other things that happen, once the uh, script is finished, when you go back to the Doctopus menu here, you'll see there's some other choices here. Some great things in here, you can choose to embargo for grading. This will automatically change all of your students to viewers and not be editors anymore. So if you did set a deadline and you said, the project was due five o'clock on Friday, you could come into this spreadsheet around five o'clock on Friday and actually click this and all students would only be viewers, in which case they couldn't edit their file anymore. You can send emails to students from this spreadsheet. Uh, when you're all done with the assignment, you can actually transfer ownership. You are the owner. There can only be one owner of a Google Doc. Teacher is the owner. When you're all said and done, you can transfer that ownership to the students and they can own their files as they go forward once the assignment's finished. So some other great features in there, and we'll show how to use the Gubrick, the Google rubric piece in a separate video. So here is the spreadsheet. What this did was it made, it added on some uh, information per student. These are actually links right into that student's file. So you can use this spreadsheet now almost as your little kind of dashboard to jump quickly in and out of students' files. So if I clicked on uh, Miss Watson's file here, that opened up here in a separate tab. Here is Miss Watson's assignment. I could come in here, leave comments along the way while she's working, um, and we'll get into the, the rubric grading piece here uh, in the next video. What this also did, if I jump back over to Google Drive, if I go to that New Media Script Assignment folder, you can see now all files are here for the teacher, and they're all organized by class hour, last name, and then I had called them Script Assignment. What a, gr a great tip for this, because we name those files that way, when you're in that folder, click Title, and everything should be in order by class hour or grade, and also alphabetically by student's last name. So if you need that nice and neat and organized by clicking Title, that does it alphabetically in the folder. So you can put this folder then too, if you have a specific place for putting assignment folders, you can drag this folder into another folder and kind of make a little folder for all your assignments. So that is Doctopus, great way to distribute to students. And I'll show you in the next video how to use the Gubrick piece to then go and assess a document. I should mention too, this works if you're distributing a document. Uh, this works, this Doctopus script works if you're distributing a slide presentation, any uh, type of file you can create in Google Drive. All right, so now that we've seen the teacher side of Doctopus, let's take a look at what happens on the student end. I'm going to flip over to another window that shows me signed in as a student. So here I am in the student account. I've gone to Google Drive. So the student would receive an email. So if I went to my uh, Gmail here, here is an email from the teacher. This is what it looks like. And they also get a link in their email right to the file. If the student goes to Google Drive, Within Google Drive, the file, because the teacher shared it to the student, that file for the student is actually in the shared with me area. So if I go to shared with me, here, if we're pretending I'm in Miss Watson, uh, student Watson's uh, Google account, here is that same file that the student can work on. So what's nice about this, too, is the student, if they're keeping things organized, I'm going to open the student's My Drive area, the student can take this file out of Shared With Me and drag and drop it. Maybe the, this is for Language Arts. They might drop it in their Language Arts folder. Um, if the teacher is using a Turn-In folder system, the student can put the same folder in the Turn-In folder. That way it's just in there and organized with all the student's other files for a particular class. Uh, so there are. So it does show up in the Shared With Me area and the student student can put the file wherever they want. So that is the student end. Uh, in the next video, we'll show you how to use the Gubrick piece of Doctopus in order to grade an assignment with a rubric. Thanks for watching.